All right, my people, we are back on the show. Thank you for staying with us. And today on the hot seat, we have a great guest. He's a New York Times best-selling author, philanthropist, speaker, radio personality. Michael Bezden is here. Good to have you, sir. What's How going you on? doing? How are you? Good to have you on the show. I'm perfect right now. And hopefully the next 15 minutes is going to teach us a lot of things. You didn't acknowledge my breast cancer outfit oh, there, oh, Sammy. Oh, oh, oh. Looking pretty hot. Breast cancer awareness, ladies and gentlemen, representing the ladies on breast cancer. Get your mammograms. Right. You got a pocket tie, too? Absolutely. Imagine, yeah. you know, you have Looking to have the good. coordination. Coordinate. <laughs> you got to coordinate. What's going on, Michael? Everything is everything, man. It's great being with you. Great to uh, sit down with you. You all should have heard the conversation we were having off <laughs> mic, and I'm sure it's going to be just as hot on mic. Well, let's hope so. Let's hope so. I'm sitting here defending my brothers, okay? Because I know Michael is always for the other side. Correct me if I'm wrong. No. I mean, you know what's so funny, Sammy, that when you talk to the men, the men say I'm on the women's side. When you talk to the women, the women say I'm on the man's side. And that, to me, says that the conversation has been balanced because they both feel equal amount of criticism. Absolutely. Yeah. But you're going to break it down for us today, right? Absolutely. Okay. Now, how did you how did you get started? I mean, you've been in the business for a while. I, I started as an author with Never Satisfied back in 1995. It was my first self-published book, The Men Crying in the Dark, in 97. And then in 99, The Maintenance Man. And then from there on, God's Gift to Women, two mm -hmm. years after that. And then Maintenance Man Part 2. Last year, the new book, uh, raise your hand if you have issues. Absolutely. Raise your hand if you have issues. Now, Michael, let me ask you, talking about raise your hand if you have issues. Let's say we have a room full of people, mm -hmm. five women, five men. Okay. And you stand up in front of them and tell them, listen, raise your hands, people, if you have issues. Who do you think is going to be the most inclined to raise their hands? I say women. Yes. The women will admit it. But, and I said this to you uh, before, that if you ask men specifically about financial issues, issues with women, issues with their child's mother, issues with things, if you specify to men what their issue could be, I promise you the guys will step up and admit that they too have issues. Okay. Now, women won't do that? Uh, well, the women don't have to be prompted to. They will just raise their hand okay. right away. But the men, if you specify what the issue could be, they, they would say they have issues. Everybody has issues. Okay. Now, all the book that you mentioned earlier, the start of the mm -hmm. conversation, um, is there any link between all those books? No. In fact, most people don't even know I'm the author of all those books. If you read one, you don't know because the writing is very different because I grew uh, two years before I wrote each of those books. So okay. I gave myself that time so that I could grow as a person. And so, no, they're, they're totally separate. The issues are different, but the lessons are, are universal. Mm. You know, honesty, integrity, you know, appreciating each other, the whole thing. You know, it's all in there. Okay. Now, you've been writing, writing books for, for a while now. Mm -hmm. And is there any reason why, you know, and I think that all, everything that you see in your books are commonsensical. Mm -hmm. Those are just plain, straight up answers to all the questions that we have. So, so what's the problem right now when it comes to relationship between man and man? Who's at fault? I, I think it's, um, it's perspective. You know, that's the thing that makes you go, hmm, right? Mm. It, it's not hearing something, because you probably heard something similar to it, but from that perspective, that's usually what changes the way you look at things is the perspective you look at it from. And so I think what I give and what Steve, I don't have a problem acknowledging Steve Harvey, a friend of mine, is that we give it to him from a man's perspective, and that's very honest. I'm a little different in the way that I deliver it compared to how you may and he, mm. he might. But it's the perspective that I think changes the way people are able to understand and then apply what you tell them. Mm. Now, <laughs> to go back to relationships, mm -hmm. you know, and I don't want to call you the black doctor Phil. No, <laughs> no, because I would never call, let me, let me say this, okay. I would never call myself a relationship expert. But, but this is how no. most people view you, right? It's okay, but I'm just not going to fall for the banana in the tailpipe because I know that there are no experts, right? Because relationships are constantly evolving mm. and, and changing. So I would say I'm a teacher okay. and I'm always a student as well. Okay. Now, what do you get all this perspective and what do you get all this knowledge about relationships uh, to talk about? Uh, I'm fortunate enough to have had a chance to interview a lot of luminaries on my show. Mm -hmm. Iyanla's been on the show. I've, I've actually had a chance to interview Dr. Phil prior to him being having his television show mm -hmm. many, many years ago in Dallas. So I've had a chance to talk to a lot of experts who come on the show who are very, very uh, dedicated to their particular fields, whether mm -hmm. it's finance, health, and relationships. In addition to my 50 years, I am 50 years old. Okay. Shout out to all my, <laughs> all my 50 plus right, years out right. there. And of course, I'm a guy Sammy that listens to what people say. I'm not a guy who feels like I just tell you what I think and that's the end of it. When you challenge me with your response, 
then we both can grow and, and learn something if we both accept that our perspectives are both valid. Mm -hmm. So is that true what people say that, you know, most of the time, you know, when you give your advice to people mm -hmm. when it comes down to relationship, do you think you are biased towards the women? No, I, I think that, uh, first of all, I love women. I, I love women in a oh, way so that... Oh, so do I. Yeah, but, you know, guys, there's a difference between loving women because of how uniquely different they are and loving women for what they can do for you and how they make you feel. Okay. And I've always had an appreciation for how different women were and a unique perspective that they brought to the relationship, whether it's emotional, whether it's intellectual, whether it's conversational, because women are very conversational. you you got to be a man with a extensive vocabulary and be <laughs> quick-witted okay. if you want to have a dialogue with most women, especially most intelligent women. Now, is there a mistake? That, what was the most common mistake that men do when it comes to, to relationships lying. with women? Lying. Lying. So you think men lie more than women when it comes to relationships? I don't know if they lie more than women, but I, I think that men are more likely to lie about who they're sleeping with because men tend to have more sex powers, gen sex partners, generally speaking, than women. And one of the biggest problems that men have, I don't even think we know that honesty is an option. We almost come out the gate with the lie as opposed okay. to, hey, I'm attracted to you, I like to go out with you, but I'm seeing someone else. I mean, the most simplest thing in the world there is to do is just to admit that up front. But for some reason, we, we seem to be challenged by that, okay. even into our 50s. Really? And 60s, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> now, let's talk about a book. Now, what prompted you to sit down and actually put together this book? It, was, it was all those years of talking about relationships and doing seminars and interacting with my family on Facebook, on Based and Live. We have 2,000 new joins every day. And you get challenged by those people's perspective. When I blog, the, the inspirational blogs or blogs about relationships. Yeah, very powerful. Oh, quotes. I, thank I, you. I, thank I, you very I, much. Yeah. They're not mine. Uh, some of them, most of them aren't, but, and I give credit to those people they come from, but they're very inspirational, and, and we have a chance to interact about those quotes, and I grow from not only the quote, but from people's res responses to the quotes, mm. and this is a result of all those years of talking about relationships, writing about relationships, but more importantly, and I can't stress this enough, from my exchange and interaction uh, with the people. Okay. Now, I want, I want to stray away a little bit from the books. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to talk about your activism side. A lot of people know you as somebody yeah. that really involved in a community mm -hmm. and that want to, you know, challenge the status quo and get mm -hmm. things moving. Yeah. How, how, where did you come up and culture this, this willingness to, to, to get involved into the political books. process? Books. 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 Just by I, reading I books. I was an avid reader of, of a lot of African American history, destruction of the black civilization, ISIS papers, vision of black men, conspiracy to destroy black boys, miseducation of the Negro, Malcolm X's autobiography, and even business books, Dennis Kimbrough, They Can Grow Rich, Ayanna Van Zandt. I mean, I read Terry McMillan. Okay. So I, I became a reader. And so when you become a reader, you become a thinker. And, and I think that's the biggest difference with how we are out here in our society. We're mm. just responding to things as opposed to taking it through a thought process. Mm. But Malcolm's life, more than anybody else's, really impacted me. And I told his daughter that when I, I ran into it, Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles in, okay. in Los Angeles, that her dad really had an impact on me because he was a family man. I'm a, I'm a father of a daughter. Uh, his, his daughters always talked about how safe they felt with their dad. And he was an activist. He's a guy that, that really stepped on a lot of toes, even mm. with the nation. And very sometimes. controversial, too. Very controversial, controversial. And I have no problem being controversial when it's, when it's <laughs> what, I, what I feel is the truth, <laughs> Absolutely. right? Absolutely. But Some you've got to have the courage to step out there and, and say what needs to be said Absolutely. when it's time to say it. Absolutely. Now, do you, do you think we have that in the black community right now, people that are willing to put everything on the line and stand up for what they believe we, is, we do. is the right thing to do? We have a lot of mentors out there. We have a lot of men that are coaching and volunteering. We have some church leaders. Not all, but some church leaders are really good leaders and they're activist church leaders. Mm. Uh, we don't have enough. And we, you know, I used to think we needed more leaders until I read Miseducation of the Negro. And what Carter G. Woodson said, we have enough need leaders. We need some workers. We need people absolutely, who are going to get it done. Absolutely. We have enough guys standing on top directing, mm. but we don't have enough people out there in the streets making it happen. Now, would you consider yourself a leader? I, you know, I, I lead when it's time, when the moment requires me to lead. But when I'm not leading, I'm working. And that's what we need, right? I mean, even in the household, the man can say I'm the leader, but hell, you got to get something done. Yeah, absolutely. You know? Absolutely. Now, you just mentioned your daughter. Mm -hmm. What kind of man, not that I'm trying to get you to actually tell your daughter who she should date and who she should sure get with. Sure, I will. With. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I will tell her what okay. type of man to date. Uh, okay, but it's the, the last choice is actually yes. going to be hers. What are you teaching your daughter about men that you think she should know? Oh, that's easy. In relationships and all that. Oh, that, that's so. easy. 
I, I tell her to beware of his character. How does he treat strangers? What kind of temperament does he have? Is he responsible for the children that he already has? What kind of relationship does he have with his mother? You know, and the temperamental part is very important to me, Sammy, because if a man gets angry, I want to know, and a woman too for that matter, how long does it take for them to say, I'm sorry? Is that soaking overnight? Is it 24 hours? Or is it immediate? Do they say after they take a deep breath, you know what, baby? I was wrong. Because that, that gives a real determination of what kind of life you're going to have with that person when you're trying to resolve conflict. Mm. So temperament is a very important quality when it comes to compatibility. But at the same time, yeah, I'm, I'm glad you said that, but pe different people react differently to some situations. Then we're not compatible for me and for her if you take a long time to come down off of being angry if you are wrong. Mm. And even if you're not wrong, you should still come down from your anger. Anger management is very important in a relationship because we know relationships are very stressful. Mm. And if you can't be calm enough to resolve the issue, you're going to have a very difficult relationship. And, and unfortunately, Sammy, sometimes a very violent one. Absolutely. We have too much domestic yeah. violence. Absolutely. You know. Absolutely. Now, yeah. personal question. Are you married? Um, do you date? Do you I, I, I love being in a relationship. And okay. a lot of people don't know that about me. You know, I, I talk about being single because I'm single, not married. Okay. But relationships, I've always been in a relationship. Okay. You know, I just don't brag about it, trying to make a point of my relationship, because my relationship's always evolving. And so I think being in a relationship is great if you're with someone you are compatible Absolutely. with. Absolutely. And it doesn't have to last forever to be successful. And, and some people think that just because you reach a certain age mm -hmm. and you're not married, you're not settled, don't we, get me started. We, we, no, you you, I, I'm going to get you started. You I'm gonna, absolutely. Because we talk about that before we got on the air. Yeah. The difference between being committed and being settled. Yes. Can and, you break it out for and us? And being monogamous. Absolutely. Um, there's a chapter in the book, raise your hand if you have issues, called uh, Being Single is Not a Disease. Because unfortunately, man, even with men too, mm -hmm. and I'm glad one of the staff members said this to us when we were setting the show up today. He said that I'm a man and I get criticized for being single because I'm 40 years old or 37 years old, however old he was. And that's an issue with both men and women. And maybe you're, you're single because you just got out of a relationship, you need time out, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe you're single because you have high standards that haven't been met. Absolutely. And maybe you just don't want to be in a relationship. Why do people have to explain why they're single? And the people who are single are not the ones with the issues. It's the people who are in a ha Absolutely. unhappy and unhealthy and relationship. And yeah, but I guess, you know, misery loves oh company. Oh, my God. <laughs> right, you just want us to be Yeah, we just want miserable people like you. They right. don't like single people, you know, right. having, having all the fun. Money, got yeah. all your money. Going you know. out and blowing the money. All that freedom can't have Yeah, that. Not, not having somebody blow up your phone. <laughs> Where you at? Where you at? Come home. <laughs> now, why do you want people to get out of the book after they don't read in the book. I, I want them to have a conversation. You know, Sammy, that's the one thing I loved about my show. Once we had a topic, whether it was domestic violence, whether it was children, something to deal with kids, we caused people to have a conversation about it after they listened to that show. That's what this book is. It's a conversation starter. It's a way to be introspective because everything that needs to be fixed needs to be talked about. Absolutely. That's why people tell you the most important aspect of a relationship is what? Communication. Communication. We gotta talk. That's what this book is about. It's about but getting you to admit you got an issue and talk about but it. But unfortunately, you know, I wish we could sit here and talk for many, many, many more hours. We'll do it again. But our time is up. Thank you for being Thanks on for the show. Me, Sammy. Now, I before it. before I let you go, where people can find this book? Raise your hand if you have it. Oh, uh, right now the ebook and hard covers on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, all okay. the ebook downloads. Everyone knows how to get an ebook. It released in the store on the nineteenth of November. Okay. Most importantly, go to Based in Live on Twitter and based in live on Facebook. That's where I live. I'm there every day. Good morning, good night. That's where all this uh, the happens. And he has, the man has a million followers on Facebook. Thank you, Facebook sir. Guy. Raise yeah. your hand if you have issues. You're making a million and one. <laughs> I will make it a million and one, definitely. I'm sure there's a lot for me to learn from your books, Michael. But thank you for being on the show. Thank you, Sam. Thank you. Thank Take you for care, coming. sir. That was a New York Times best-selling author, philanthropist, and radio personality, Michael Basden. We'll be right back, folks. Don't go anywhere. You should do this one up. Uh -huh.